Hello everyone, um, uh, this is uh, our new chapter, Externalities for Intermediate Microeconomics 2. Uh, in this chapter, uh, uh, we're going to talk about um, some keywords, which are externalities, so we're going to define what it means. And then I'm going to talk about consumption and production externality, positive versus negative externality. Um, probably this is what I will do in this video and in the following uh, videos I'll talk about in detail um, what it means the property rights are not well defined. So I'm going to talk about the roommate's problem, the one smoker and another uh, and non-smoker roommates. I'll talk about um, source of, sources of externalities, um, sort of why the externalities could cause uh, inefficiency. Uh, in a market environment. Um, so basically the roommate's problem is one of those. I mean the property rights are not well defined. Or the second problem is that the, uh, the, the agents in the market do not internalize the externality and as a result of this the, the market outcome may not be efficient as it was predicted by the first fundamental theorem of welfare economics. Um, and then um, I'll talk about how we can um, theoretically get rid of um, the inefficiency caused by uh, externalities, uh, which is called Pigouvian tax or Pigouvian subsidy. And then I'll talk about the tragedy of commons. As I said, probably those are not all fit into one video, so I'll talk uh, in, in much lengthier versions of those in the follow-up videos. But now let's start with the externality. So what does externality mean? For this course, at the very least, the externality is basically in a market environment. There are a bunch of agents. Um, some of the agents' actions, choices, influence, impact, the well-being, the payoff, the utility or the profit of the other agents in the economy. All right? Um, so the agents are not independent uh, individuals in some sense. Um, you may wonder, well, the game theory is doing exactly this, and you're right, the game theory is basically um, and investigating the situations where all agents' actions influence all the other agents' uh, 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 payoffs, utilities. Um, but in a, in a, in a less uh, strategic environment, for example, in a general equilibrium framework, it's, it's a less uh, strategic in the sense that uh, we assume there's a large number of buyers, large number of sellers, right? And everybody is a price taker. And so an individual doesn't really have an impact to change the market outcome. But nevertheless, in the aggregate terms, the agents, um, the consumers or the, uh, uh, the producers may, uh, that the, their choices, I mean, may influence the, 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 the payoff, the welfare of the uh, other agents. Uh, so examples. Uh, pollution is, 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 is one good example. So um, uh, the, the, the factories uh, produce something as a side product, they generate pollution and the pollution influences the consumers or the other agents in the society, in the, in the economy, uh, usually negatively, right? A traffic uh, is, is another uh, externality. So uh, the consumers, well, the drivers, um, use the roads, the highways, and the more the people use, the more the traffic, and, 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 and the, the traffic basically influences everybody else. Well, because you spend more time on traffic, um, and, and, and so um, there's, there's more likelihood of getting into an accident, etc. So uh, to traffic becomes sort of the decision of the other agents, sort of whether to uh, ride a car or not. And, and as a result of this generate an, an additional traffic, um, sort of influences externality on other agents. All right. So, uh, well, we kind of divide the externality into two groups in this course, the consumption externality and the production externality. Well, if a consumer's payoff, well-being, usually we, we call it utility. If the consumer's utility is impacted by the other agent's choices, we call this consumption externality. 
If a producer's well-being, uh, a payoff, uh, we usually call it profit, is influenced, impacted by the choice of the other agents in the economy, whether the other agent is consumer or producer, doesn't matter. But if the impacted agent is producer, we call it production externality. All right. Um, so basically, the the the, um, uh, the 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 characteristics of the impacted agent determines whether it's a consumption externality or production externality. Well. Um, here, a, a more important distinction, um, an externality could be positive or could be negative, all right? So the positive externality basi basically means uh, the, the other agent's choices positively influences an impacted agent's payoff, utility, or profit, all right? And the negative externality is the opposite. It's just the other agent's choices negatively influences. Uh, the impacted agent's well-being, the payoff. So let's give an example. So um, say um, we have two neighbors and one neighbor uh, grows a, a flower garden, all right, so a beautiful flower garden. Uh, well, your neighbor could actually, you know, see the uh, scenery, like the flowers, and enjoy that nice view. Um, or even nice smell on, in, in spring. So this is a positive externality. So one neighbor is, 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 is causing a positive externality on the other neighbor. Right, so basically you make the nature more beautiful. Right? Um, but it, the exactly same example uh, can be thought of as uh, a negative externality. How so? For example, your, um, your, your neighbor um, you know, having this beautiful flower garden may attract extra uh, bees um, or insects, which could actually influence you negatively because, you know, um, if there are a lot of bees around, you may not be able to enjoy your uh, backyard. And so that could, the, the same example can be thought of as a negative externality. All right. Um, um, well, a, 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 another example is, well, as I gave you earlier, the pollution, right? The, the factories are producing something and then they release gas or some other chemicals into nature. And so this is a pollution in general. And usually the pollution negatively influences the other agent's well-being. Okay. Um, so I think, and I hope you, you got the idea. Um, well, well, the distinction is somewhat relevant because if we're talking about positive externality, well, then we will talk about uh, Pigouvian subsidy. If we talk about negative externality, we usually talk about Pigouvian tax. All right. So we basically tax the, the agent that impacts the other negatively and we subsidize, subsidize the agents who impact the others positively. All right, so that's that's how the positive versus negative externality with uh, works with the Pigouvian tax versus subsidy. All right, well, so the next thing uh, I will just briefly explain, and then I'll dive into the details of those explanations in the next video, is the following. So, um, if you remember, well, in this chapter, don't forget that we will be again giving examples like there are two agents, one for example, producer, an agent, or two producers. But we are not meant to um, work, uh, talk about a duopoly or, you know, a, a monopolistic environment. Rather, we, our examples, our discussions will, will, will be on a general equilibrium model, all right? So there's large number of agents. Just for simplicity, we're going to simplify the models that we discuss as having two agents, okay? So in a general equilibrium framework where there are many buyers and sellers, they, they come together, what they do is they, they basically choose their quantities, all right? So if you're a producer, you choose your quantity to maximize your profit by taking the market prices as given, all right? And then if you're a consumer, you, you, you choose your demand for goods uh, just to maximize your utility, again, given the uh, prices in the market. And uh, so if those are how the agents behave, well, the market prices in the equilibrium will be such that, remember, every agent maximizes his or her 
uh, utility or profit if it is the firm, a producer, and then those uh, demands and supplies uh, are going to, I'm sorry, those prices are going to clear the, uh, the markets, meaning the, the supplies and the demands will be the same. So our very important theorem was, if you remember, the first theorem of, uh, first fundamental theorem of welfare economics says, oh, well, you know what, in this economy, uh, the outcome, the equilibrium outcome, uh, the, I mean, the number of uh, supply, the total goods that will be supplied and the number of total demand, the, the agents are going to uh, demand the consumption. So this equilibrium outcome is always pretty efficient, all right? Uh, meaning, if you try to make some agents better off, um, it's going to hurt some other agents. So there's no win-win situation for everyone, okay? Well, that's a very strong result. However, when there is an externality, this result will potentially and possibly not going to work, all right? So it's going to disturb the market, and the market outcome will potentially be uh, uh, Predo inefficient. All right. Well, there are two main reasons why externality may be causing inefficiency. Well, the first one is that the agents in the market are not clear. They don't have a common knowledge about what the property rights uh, are or who owns the, uh, you know, how much initial endowments in some sense. All right. So you have some idea and the other agent has another idea. And in our example, we're going to talk about a roommate's uh, problem. Um, there's a smoker and non-smoker roommates. All right. And they're basically two goods. One of the good is how much uh, smoke to produce and you know, how much smoke uh, an agent is allowed to smoke in, in the house. And the other uh, good is, say, money. All right. Or, or uh, private consumption in some sense. So, um, uh, well, one agent loves to, uh, uh, you know, smoke. The other agent hates smoke. And, you know, they both love money, uh, let's suppose. So in this environment, if there is no clear-cut rules, like, say, there is no item on the uh, lease, the contract, which says, oh, um, you're not permitted to smoke inside the apartment, for example. Um, well, then the agents may say, oh, the smoker uh, may say, well, actually, I am allowed to smoke because th th there is no condition on the lease. And the non-smoking agent may say, oh, no, you can't smoke because although it's not written, it's illegal to smoke inside the house. So when there is a sort of a, 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 a confusion about uh, who owns the uh, who owns, uh, you know, the, 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 what kind of right? Well, then that may cause, uh, uh, that may disturb the uh, market economy, even if there is a market, all right, um, and then causes inefficiency. Another reason is, another reason why externalities causes inefficiency is that usually the, the, the kind of actions or, 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 or the goods that causes externality doesn't have a well-defined market, all right? So think about a, a pollution, all right? So the firms produce pollution, but it's actually not a product. It's just a side product, right? And so usually there isn't a market for pollution. Although, um, you know, uh, the Kyoto Protocol and the, and the, the, the Paris uh, the, the meetings, I, I, I don't remember the details. They, they, they all, they, you know, the countries all around the world get together and try to sort of control which country is allowed to produce or sort of release how much carbon monoxide or, or, any, or any other, uh, you know, uh, toxic materials into the nature. And so they are kind of trying to create a market for pollution. But normally in many economies, at, at least uh, that, that wasn't the case throughout the history, uh, the pollution, there isn't any sort of a market for uh, uh, many externalities. Uh, think about the, ex uh, the, the tr traffic, right? In, in many countries, in many cities, there is really no ex uh, sort of market for, ex I mean, you do not pay a price for generating more or less external uh, uh, traffic. Um, some cities are trying to control this some ways, like you're not allowed to enter uh, the downtown area, um, on certain days, if your 
uh, license plate is I don't know odd number or even numbered or sometimes the 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 the, the city I think London started applying this I'm not sure um, the the city um, basically charges a fee if you enter the uh, the, the downtown area and hence uh, increase the traffic. So they are trying to create a market for that, um, so some externalities. But uh, overall, the, the, the other reason why the externalities is causing a problem is that there isn't a market for it. And hence, the externality um, will not be internalized. All right, so I'll, I'll give a specific sort of example and model about what it means internalizing externality and how it could lead to proto efficiency. All right, and, and so as I said, it's like even if there is a market, which is what we are going to discuss in the next video, uh, so even if there is a market for externality, if the property rights are not well defined, we may still have inefficiency. All right, so um, let's stop now and then continue with our next topic, which is the roommate's problem.